to empirical probability. This is part of the Bayesian statistics sequence. And what we're going to talk about this time is we're going to talk about specifically types of probabilities. But we're going to keep on with this idea of uncertainty. We're trying to somehow quantify the uncertainty. So since we're thinking about uncertainty, we need to become familiar with this language of probability, and there's different approaches, and some of the most common ones are empirical, which is what we're going to talk about in this one, which is evidence-based, uh, equally likely, and subjective. We'll focus on the empirical probability in this video, but keep in mind through the next 10 videos or more that our goal is to quantify the uncertainty, and we're going to need this language of probability to do that, and we're going to need some mathematics. Okay, so the most natural way to think about uncertainty is how often have you observed the phenomenon you're looking for, right? Um, if you've never seen it, then you're going to be quite uncertain about it. Whereas if it's very, very common in your life, then you're going to be quite certain about it. Okay, so why not just record how many times you've looked or observed the outcome that you're interested in and compare it to how many times you looked? So you could say, let n be the number of times you look for that specific outcome, uh, e is the event that you're interested in, and let n of e be the number of times that event was observed. So you could say that there is an n of e to n chance of seeing e. So suppose we're interested in the chance someone will run a red light at a congested corner. We set up a surveillance camera and record the intersection for, say, three-hour period during one day. We go back, we look at the video, and we see that 13,432 cars went through the intersection during the video. The light cycled 90 times in the three-hour period, and four cars went through the red light each on different light cycles, meaning that one car didn't follow another one through the red light. Okay, so empirically, there is a 4 to 13,432 chance that a car will run the red light. Okay, that's kind of hard to interpret, or kind of hard to think about. So you have to kind of do the math in your head. Is four, I mean, 13,000? Oh, that's kind of hard to think about. Well, what you could do is just turn it into a fraction, okay? And that's what empirical probability is. We're just going to turn this into a fraction. Here, P hat means this is going to be our estimated probability. And here's the event we're interested in. The car runs a red light that it's going to be four over the number of times we looked which is approximately 0 0.0002977. And you're like, I don't know what that number means. Don't have to know what it means. You only have to recognize that it's near zero, which means it's rare. Okay, now suppose we changed our event to be that a red light was run. Not how many cars ran it, but each red light, how many of those were run. And we got this off of our video, and so... Here we've got P, the hat on the top of it means it's estimated. The light cycle has a car run the red light. Well, there was four times that that occurred out of the 90 times we looked, and this is approximately 0 0.044. And you say, wow, uh, that's a lot bigger than the last one. Yes, it is. The last one, that was in the fractions of percent of chance of happening. Here, this is about a 4% chance of happening that, you know, if you watched a specific light cycle, there's a 4% chance that the car would, a car would run that light cycle. All right. So, you know, the key thing here is be sure you understand what event you're looking for. A lot of times people don't clearly define it, so they don't know whether they've seen it or not. And I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Okay. So in general, we can write the empirical probability formula in this way. Here we're going to put a P with a hat. E is the event, which is number of cars or number of whatever, um, and or what the event we're interested in. And here we're just going to say the number of times we saw it over the number of times we observed it. And this is exactly what you would do if you were thinking about it anyway. Uh, most people would just naturally sort of gravitate to this. All right, and the reason people just gravitate towards it is it's, there's a probability theorem that goes with it, and it's called the law of large numbers. And this is the actual law of large numbers, and you might hear lots of people say lots of things about uh, laws of large or laws of average or laws of this. Um, be sure you know which ones they're talking about because some of the ones they talk about don't exist. So what is the law of large numbers? Well, it states that as we let n grow large, 
the number of times we look, then the probability of our event that we estimate using our little formula there is going to approach the true probability in the population, right? We're going to so what does it say? Well, we can estimate the true probability so long as we have enough information. Where n is the number of times we looked, it's the number of pieces of information we have. All right, so uh, there are some issues with empirical probability. Number one, it's expensive. You actually have to do the experiment. Okay, so that can cause problems if, you know, uh, it's incredibly experiment expensive to do so. Uh, rare events are difficult, so uh, think about it. I have to look at a earthquake. Well, I have to wait for one to happen, right? <laughs> so if I'm going to be looking at them, and especially the time between them, uh, if I don't have historical data, I am going to have to wait for that to happen. And that can be extremely time-consuming. Oh, and also these don't become sort of accurate until n is large, which means we couldn't just do a few expensive experiments. We're going to have to do a lot of them in order to find this out. So we're interested in finding a better way to do this, and that's what our next set of videos are about. We're going to learn about probability, the language of probability, and a whole bunch of formulas that go with it. And when I say formulas, I do mean mathematics, so be prepared, and we'll see you in the next video.